Praise God. That's not a bad way to start 2023, was it? <laughs> hey, we'll take that. Praise God. We are so blessed to be here, me and my beautiful wife, Donna. And, and we love your pastors. I know you love your pastors. They're amazing. You know, God sends some people into your life to be your friend, and he sends some people into your life to be your brother. And uh, Pastor Chad has become a brother to me, and so I'm so thankful. And, and every year he wants to give us a check for that. Brother, you're welcome to do so. <laughs> And, uh, and then Jennifer is just amazing and shows so much love to us. And, and uh, you're in good shape, amen? This place is beautiful. Come on, y'all. It's changed a little bit since I was here. Praise God. So good. Praise the Lord. Pastor's asked me to do the impossible. And so we're going to try it and believe for a miracle. He said, I want you to share a review of last year in just a few moments, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, just share some pictures as well, and let us know what the investment, what it went in towards, how it enabled you to do ministry, and the things you're going to be doing, and I said, okay, so I looked through 7,400 pictures, <laughs> yeah, me too, and I got it down to 40, come on, y'all, that's a miracle right there. And uh, so we're going to go through some things. I just want to share with you the process of what is happening. And so that was the beginning of 2023. We knew there was going to be six months of raising funds. And uh, Bayside Church has only existed a couple of years. And we had filled up a place downtown at 320 Dolphin Street with about 110 homeless folks as well as other people. And uh, we ended up giving that church away to another church plant, praise God. And then God blessed us with the building that you helped provide the funds to not only purchase but do renovations towards and so we went out and began to share the vision God said you share the vision and watch me be God I said that's a good plan and so for six months we traveled me and my lovely wife all over the country and we ended up seeing God bring in three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in six months we're so thankful so we, uh, we, we were already in the building meeting in January. We moved into it at the end of January last year because we had to have a place. We'd outgrown the other, and God had blessed us. We'd then packed out two services, praise the Lord. And so we needed somewhere else to go, and God gave us the ability to go into that building early. Even though it wasn't ours, we borrowed it and uh, in partnered with the ministries there. Now, just to clear any confusion, there's three ministries happening at this location. Bayside Church, which is a brand new church plant, has moved into it, and we are building a sanctuary, or remodeling a sanctuary, and doing those things. It was a gymnasium. You'll see more of that in a little bit. Number two, though, we're Bayside Metro, in that we took over the ministries of Metro Ministries, which was there for 30 years and by Bill and Cheryl Gray, and we began to minister to the kids in the inner city, and that ministry has gone from around 12 kids to over a hundred kids in the last six months. Come on. And we're so thankful. But more than the number, it's grown spiritually, praise God. And then number three, and we're so pumped about this, is By Your Side Family Hope Mission. And this is our home for homeless moms with small children. And so we felt an urgent need in the community for that. We are hoping to move our first family in by the end of February, 1st of March. Come on, man. So praise God. That's awesome. And so we're just excited. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But anyway, first thing we did is realize when we got in, we had two of our main air conditioner compressors go out. <laughs> Hey, welcome to the building. <laughs> so, you know, it always waits till after you bought it to do that, right? And so uh, we had two. As a matter of fact, Pastor, I went in this morning to turn all the heat on. I tested it yesterday. Everything was perfect, and two of the units did not come on. So we got to fix that. So they're having missions church today. It's cold, and I love them, praise God. It's nice and warm in here, praise the Lord. I like it. So anyway, but we had to replace two AC, the compressors. That cost us several thousand. Then we found out upon inspection that we needed to replace 15,000 screws in the roof of our building <laughs> to bring it up to code. First of all, I'm glad I didn't have to do that and because they won't let us. But number two, I'm so thankful God provided because we couldn't have done these things initially without your offering, without your giving. This, and, and we are so thankful. As we saw over $30,000 of extra expenses that we were not prepared for as we went into it. But because of your generosity, we were able to get right on it, get it fixed, and get it moving forward. Somebody say, Amen. Praise God. But we're committed. We're not going to stop ministry. We don't have time to stop ministry while we remodel. There's too many people in need out there. And so we had an Easter uh, outreach and health fair. And y'all see it, Colleen. Come on. How about that, Colleen, y'all? 
Y'all see her and a team down there, and they rocked the house. I mean, they come in and just blew it up. And we had kids from everywhere come in. We did an Easter egg service, or Easter service, an Easter egg hunt. And we also had a health fair where we had eye exams and all the stuff to go with that. And we discovered kids that needed glasses desperately. And we were able, because again of your giving, to provide glasses and eye inspection and services for those children and their families. And so we're so thankful. Even had one lady who had a condition that she was totally oblivious to that would have killed her a quote by the nurses had they not discovered it and gotten her to a doctor and got her treatment that she needed and it was all because of that help fair on that day praise God and so that's investment amen praise the Lord this was awesome the summer came about these kids had never been to kids camp they'd never been to youth camp <laughs> And so we loaded a van load of youngins, and we headed north to Camp Springville, and they experienced life-changing presence of God Almighty and what it was to be outside of the neighborhood. Come on, somebody. And experience other kids. It was an amazing thing. Our youth went in, and we had some hard youth. You just need to understand, we had some hard youth. I mean, showing up street kids. And, uh, but we said, you know what? I'm going. We're going to make it happen. We'll take care of the place. And uh, we're going. And so we went, and they were street kids. And they sat there, and what are we doing here, and why are we here? But I'm so thankful by Thursday, Wednesday, and Thursday, those youngins were in the altars, come on, crying out to God, tears running down their faces, their hands raised to God. They had, had Some of them were baptized in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Praise God. Came back. Here's the beauty of it. We have three of those kids now helping in our children's ministry every Sunday. They're in there working with the kids, mentoring the kids, ministering to the kids. We have two that's joining our worship team. Come on. And so God is not just saving them. He's using them in the kingdom, praise God, if we disciple them. We're so thankful for that. And all that happened, and then we finally bought the building. <laughs> so, and so sure enough, in September, September the 7th, we signed the papers on that building. We're so thankful for God enabling us, being such a new work. Had we not had the backing in the bank that you provided for us, we could not have been approved for the loan to finish out what was needed to purchase that facility. And so we are so thankful to you for that. What a blessing. You said, boy, that money went did a lot of things. Oh, it did, a lot of things. It's still doing things, praise God. And so that's called stewardship, Amen. So then after we finally owned the place, we started remodeling the place. And uh, we had a big work day where Coastal Team brought teams in for two days, came in. A team from Lomax, a church that I once pastored for almost 20 years, they brought a team. Bayside had a team. And in two days, we had 64 individuals working on that facility. And let me tell you, also Alabama Adult and Teen Challenge came in and finished hanging the sheetrock on the walls that your team built, praise God. What a great organization, and so we're so thankful for them. But let me just walk through some of the things we did in those two days. First of all, they removed around 500 feet of six-foot-high fences. Now, when your pastor was out there to shoot the video you saw just a moment ago, he's out there, we're waiting for everything to get set up, and he says, it sort of feels like a prison out here. I said, it does, doesn't it? Let me tell you something. When a pastor gives you a $145,000 check, if he says paint it yellow with pink polka dots, you know what you do? You paint it yellow and you put pink polka dots on it, amen? So when he said this fence makes it feel like a prison, I said, that's got to go. First project on the books, that fence has got to go, and it's gone, and we got $80 at the metal place for that fence. <laughs> amen. Give that keeps on giving. It feels a little less like a prison now, pastor, so we're good now. And, uh, but he was right, amen. And so praise God, removed it. Uh, you'll notice in the picture a while ago, Mr. Charlie out there supervising. <laughs> You're going to see Mr. Charlie in a lot of pictures because Mr. Charlie was everywhere. There were seven projects going. I was constantly moving from project to project, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And every time I woke up, there's Charlie. I said, well, hey, Mr. Charlie. He's like, hey. I said, what you doing? Just, just watching, just checking it out. I said, making sure you're going right. He did the carpeting. He did the flooring. He did the painting. He did the yard. He was handling it. He handled it, amen. So praise God for Mr. Charlie being on the scene, taking care of business, amen. 
We removed bushes that looked a little trashy. <laughs> we removed a screened-in porch that I still don't know why it was there. We removed carpet that had been there for 30 years. You ain't lived till you've tore carpet up that's been walked on for 30 years out of a four-year. These guys were wrestling a bear, and they got it done, praise God. And they kept pulling up carpet and pulling up carpet and pulling up carpet. And then you know what you got to do after you pull up carpet? You got to lay new carpet. And so we began to lay the brand new two by two squares in the carpet, began to, to lay it all through the building. Then we began to put down the plank flooring, the LVP, and some of your guys was so part, a big part of that. And it just made an amazing difference in how it looked, how it smelt, how it everything. Amen. We painted walls. And this still blows my mind. Your team came in, and it was mostly your team. They painted an entire 2,500 square foot house. Three bedrooms, two baths, dining room, living room, and kitchen in one day. Blew my mind. We were hoping just to get part of it done. They knocked it out in one day. Come back next day and finish cutting it, and it was amazing. So they didn't just come and stand around. They got with it. Amen. Praise God. And, of course, Mr. Charlie was there slinging paint as well. And so, <laughs> and so painting, painting, painting. Uh, he's pumped this morning. Old Miss took it to him last night. Or, mm. But we got the painting done. The living room was done. That's the finished product there. Here's a part that I did not. This was one I was a little nervous about, but the right crew. How many know when God sends a team, he sends the right team? And God sent a team of men that got in there, and they built a 120-foot of 22-foot high wall to create our sanctuary, foyer, and youth facility. Come on, for all the ministry, we're going to do a chapel as well. And so they built that wall and sheetrocked a good chunk of it. And so we're so thankful for that. Got it done. It's done right and it's still standing today. So we praise God for that. <laughs> 64 people did an estimated $25,000 worth of labor in two days. Wow. Let me just show you a couple of pictures. You got to see the progress. Look at the original gym that we use as a sanctuary. Don't you love those curtains? Praise God. And we didn't even have any puppets. It was just the curtains. <laughs> but <laughs> you can see it's a gym floor. It's a 30-year-old building. It looks like that. Amen. But this is the latest picture we had of our, our chapel sanctuary. Amen. <laughs> this is our new foyer that my little wife and the ladies love decorate for Christmas. Come on. Praise God. This is your by-your-side bedrooms upstairs where the families will live and we'll be able to share Jesus with them and give them the comfort they need <clears throat> and the ministry that they need. And they're all going to look like this with beds and with all the things they need to make it home. We're so excited about that for By Your Side. We have a family room that we're going to create. Already got the furniture for it. Already got the beds for it. You guys have been so generous with saying, hey, I got some furniture. I got this. Please no more. We've maxed it out. It's full. It's wonderful. And we're so happy for it. And uh, it's been oiled up with anointing oil. We've prayed over it. We're good. Amen. And uh, y'all have been amazing to us with furniture and those things. They're ready. And uh, we're actually moving the couple in uh, this Saturday. Praise God. The directors, Evan and Ashley Intrigan, there are two daughters and there's one on the way. Praise God. We don't know if that's a boy or girl yet. We're praying for a boy for them. And uh, they are so anxious to move in. And next Saturday we're moving them in, getting them in place. And they'll be on-site directors of our By Your Side Family Hope Mission. And so we're so pumped. And so the next steps bring the families. Amen. Praise God. And so a wonderful, wonderful thing. But what does all this matter? I mean, when it's all said and done, it's money, it's been given, praise God. It's money that if you're not careful, you give it and you forget it. <laughs> you don't hear about it, but you need to understand it's more than that. It matters. What is all this serving? What does it matter? I mean, we went, we feel good about ourselves, we helped somebody. Okay, wonderful. We provided for people. You've provided for people all year long as we have provided clothing, as we have provided heat, as we have provided housing, as we have found jobs, as we have done all this stuff. You did all those things. But if you're not careful, you lose the fullness of what is happening when you do that. It's not so the church is blessed, though it is blessed. It's not because you want to fulfill some duty. That's not what it's about. But you're actually impacting the kingdom, and it matters more than you can imagine or comprehend. It's more than writing a check. It's more than, there's more to it than that. 
What does all the giving, the serving, the providing really matter? 1 Corinthians 13, Paul is writing. It is the love chapter, if you will. And here's what he says. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, to be a martyr, but have not love, I gain nothing. Then he goes to describe what love is. Pretty powerful part of it. But in the final verse of that chapter, number 13, he wraps it all up. This is what he says. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. I mean, aren't those other two pretty good, aren't they? <laughs> the title of my message today is Love, Hope, and Faith. You say, you got it backwards, preacher. <laughs> I did, on purpose. Because I want to show you something that I believe God showed me today in regards to why everything matters that we do for God. Because we do all we do because it shows our love for God and God's love for them. It's all about the love. He's talking about all this power and all this spiritual things and all this authority and all this generosity and all this sacrifice. But Paul comes back and he says, but you can do all of those things and you've wasted your time. You can give all you want to give. You can do all you want to do. You can be all you want to be. But if it wasn't out of a heart of love, God's love, then it has no power in effect like God wants it to be. And that doesn't just correct us in any way. There's no need for correction. But I want you to recognize why did you do what you did? Because the truth is God is love. And when God's in you, you can't help but flow love out of you. <laughs> and you don't even understand the fullness of why you did what you did. Some of you wonder, why did I do it? I don't know. Why did we write that check? Why did we go? Because the love of God oozes out of you and pours out of you in ways that you're not even aware is happening. Praise God. Because the power of love is that God's love is what draws people. It's always been the source. It's always been the way. Facilities are amazing. Praise God. I've pastored in some of the best. I'm getting to preach in one of the best in this country right here, right now. Thank God for facilities. Programs, amazing. Worship, yes. Preaching, yes. It's amazing. But the truth is when it's all said and done, what keeps you coming back is the love that flows in this place to you. What's the heart of the pastor is to show God's love constantly flowing in and through everything we do. Matter of fact, our desire is that everything we do be an overflow of what God is doing in us and through us. So we have a desire to do those things. Why does it matter? Because people are drawn by God's love. See this congregation? This is a, after just a couple of months of being there. We started with just 24 people. And God has already taken and exploded. It's bigger than this now. Matter of fact, last week in our service, we were sitting in 110 chairs that you are allowing us to store for you. Thank you. <laughs> we're going to keep them used and fresh for you. Hey, it's the least we could do. And we only had eight empty chairs. Because God is growing in blessing because of the love and generosity. Praise God. So if you've got any more black cushion chairs you want us to store for you, just let me know. <laughs> People are drawn. Look at the kids praying for one another. These are kids that we used to kick out of class and have to treat with issues. They were fighting and were doing the rebellious things. And now they're in church praying over one another. Why? Because somebody loved them enough to love them. Praise God. It birthed something in them that now they love one another where they used to pick at each other and hit each other and curse each other. And now it's about what can we do for one another. And they're praying one another. Little Haley, this is one of my favorite kids. Little Haley was a little issue. Miss Donna was doing the children's church at that time, and we was constantly having to deal with little Miss Haley. She's one of them kids that's too smart to be in there and a little advanced for her age. And she wasn't ever ugly, maliciously. She's just being a kid. But finally, she moved up to youth. Donna cried for two days, happy, now I'm playing. But she, <laughs> she has such an amazing spirit about her, the presence. And a few weeks ago when we finished, uh, we had told no one that we were almost finished with the sanctuary. And so after school, we have a bunch of kids that show up every afternoon to get 
out of the street and get, because mom sometimes will just lock the door so nobody comes in during the day, and they don't want the kids in there because they don't want to get in trouble, so they just roam. And so we said, hey, come to our place and hang out and have a safe place to do your homework. We feed them a snack. We love on them. We do those things. So her and a couple of her girlfriends came over, and they said, Pastor, what you doing? I said, I'm just here finishing up the sanctuary. You want to look at it? She said, yes. And so they came, and when they walked around the corner, she grouped up and grabbed her mouth. I was standing over behind her, and I said, Haley, are you okay? And I watched tears run down her face. She said, Pastor, it's so pretty. You've made it so pretty for us. Mm. Last Sunday, she's sitting on the front row of the Christmas service. My little wife sitting down at the other end, kept noticing, tried to get her to come sit with her. She wouldn't, so Donna eased over there and sat with her. And after service, she's crying again. This is one of our kids. Donna says, you don't mind me asking. I remember how emotional my first candlelight service was. What are you feeling? Why are you crying? And she said, peace. I've never felt so much peace. That's the love of God. That's the love of God. That's why it matters. Last weekend, we had a new kid show up. We have kids show up. I don't know if you noticed, in all the pictures, I could give you a thousand pictures, there's kids there working. We don't make them work. They show up, and this is their attitude. Pastor, what can we do? I had two show up. No, four show up yesterday, two first thing in the morning. Brother said, Pastor, what can we do today? What can we do today? And we're having to teach them. Sometimes we had to go back and fix what they did. <laughs> Most of the time, we had to go back and fix what they did. But we love working with them and mentoring because seven out of ten of the homes in that neighborhood, not in the country, not in the world, not in the state, in our neighborhood, seven out of ten do not have a male adult figure in their home. And for us as men to say, come here, let me show you how to work that drill. Let me show you how to do you, you, you can't imagine the value of that to those kids, the love that they're feeling in that. And we may be teaching some of them something that will give them a living one day besides something they shouldn't be doing. But those kids were there, amen. And they brought a new kid, never seen him before. I said, hey, buddy, how you doing? And so they come in, Pastor, what can we do? I said, well, here's what we're doing today. And so we're putting baseboard down. Everybody loves to shoot the nail gun, hopefully in the board. <laughs> so, you know, and I said, uh, well, buddy, we're doing baseboard. And so I'm listening in the other room, and I hear the new kid go, why are we doing this? And without hesitation, little Terrell, one of my favorite little kids, he says, because this is our church. And we're making it beautiful for God. Come on, somebody. You don't think they ain't getting it? They getting it, amen? And plus, McDonald's help too. <laughs> Love births hope. Love hope. The number one thing we've heard at 320 with the homeless and the number one thing we repeatedly keep hearing is, I have hope again, Pastor. Pastor, I have hope. Hope that my family would be brought back together. Hope that I'll overcome my addiction. Hope that I'll get out of the neighborhood and get somewhere with a life that I can live and enjoy with my family that's safe. And I don't have to worry about if I'm going to be on the evening news or not. Hope that I will not just have a man, but I'll have a godly man that will be a husband. As I had a 16-year-old young man come to me to the altars two weeks ago and said, Pastor, can I talk to you? Sure. What you got, buddy? EJ, he says, he says, and tears began to run in. He said, Pastor, I'm praying that my mama finds a man that'll love her like she needs to be loved. I'm tired of seeing her having to do it by herself, and I need a father in my life. That's powerful. That's a prayer request. Amen. And he said, for the first time in my life, I feel like there's a chance that she could find one. The difference is God. It's the love. It's something that bursts inside of them, that hope. Hope is God saving, healing, and delivering them. Hope. Don't we all need more hope? Don't we come at Easter and at Christmas and all the weeks in between because we're looking for hope? Is there still hope out there? Because it's dark on the news. It's dark on the, 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 the devices. But man, if you can just get a spark of hope that says, I believe that things can be different. I believe that things can be wonderful. I believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundant more than I can ask or imagine. Love versus hope. Hope is defined as waiting with an anticipation of reception. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the conviction of things not seen. You cannot have hope and it not establish faith. And you cannot have faith 
without hope. Love births hope. Hope establishes faith. Mm. Faith opens up the portal to heaven that allows God to invade your life and your situation. Glory to God. And when you bring God into it, oh, there is unlimited possibilities because there is absolutely nothing in or about your life that God cannot change, He cannot heal, He cannot deliver, He cannot make happen. He speaketh those beings that be not as though they were, because the moment they leave His lips, they are, because He's that God. If it's already lived and died, He resurrects it because that's what needs to be there. There's no limits to, to His power. And so hope is crucial. Love births hope. Hope establishes faith. Romans 8 and 24 says, For in this hope we were saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope at all. <laughs> for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Hope is waiting with anticipation of reception. We're not waiting on anything we don't believe is coming. We don't have time to wait for that. Amen? Amen. If you tell me something's coming, I'll wait on it for a season. <laughs> And the more I believe it's coming, the longer I'll wait. And when God speaks into your life, you must establish. I'll tell you something. I speak everywhere I go, and I believe it's so true. The Bible says that God is the first and the last. He is Alpha. He is Omega. And He's everything in between. It's a circle, not a line. And I'll tell people when God speaks something into your life through His Spirit, which usually happens as a result of Him loving us, and, and having a relationship with us, when God speaks that, let's say that you come up and you say, I need a healing in my life, and God says, you are healed. <laughs> if you believe that, if there's hope created and birth in you, suddenly faith begins to be walked in, and you can leave going, well, I still feel sick. I still feel hurting. But see, what you don't understand is the God that is Alpha, the God that is present, wasn't speaking in that moment. He was speaking in your future. He was standing here going, yep, I'm looking, and according to this, you're healed. <laughs> you remember when Jesus spoke, and he said, he said but they, they saw the blind man, they said, why is he blind? Was it because of his sins or his mother and father's sins? He said, no, it was so that on this day, <laughs> he could be healed to show you that I am who I say I am. <laughs> can I tell you, I don't know when your this day is, <laughs> but when God speaks it, you can put your hope in it, because the one who is love spoke it into your life, uh, and you can wait with anticipation, which we call faith uh, of receiving. I may still feel sick today, and I'm not sure when my day's coming, but I know God's standing there, and he's looking on it and going, yep, here it is, praise God. You've been healed, delivered, sanctified, married, buried, whatever it may be. God is already there, praise God. That's the beauty of hope and faith that is meshed together. When we live in, with hope, we walk in faith. Faith creates an opportunity for God to move in our lives. All of the giving, the serving, the providing leads to an invasion of God's spirit into our lives and into the lives that we do it for. We had one of your people that came and worked. He called me one day and he said, Pastor, I need to talk with you. I said, what you got, buddy? He said, there's a kid there. His name's Will. I said, yeah, I know Will very well. Will's a rambunctious little fella. The one you want to peach his head off every time you're around him. But he's one of the sweetest kids we've ever seen. God had laid that kid on his heart and said, I don't know why, but God's laid him on my heart and I can't shake it and I want to bless him for Christmas. I said, that's awesome. I'll make sure he gets it. Tell me how you want to do it. So he met me in Mobile and brought me a gift and a card and, and he said, I don't know why, but I have to get this to him. And so I took Will off to the side and put him in a room and I said, Will, I want to share with you what God's love looks like. I said, a gentleman that you work with God has laid you on his heart to bless you for some reason. And we don't, neither one of us know what that reason is, but God does. And I want to show you the love of God in his life. And the man had said, he said, I feel like maybe he needs to buy his mama something. I said, Will, this is a lot of money for you, buddy. It's a hundred dollar bill. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. He said, wow, pastor. Tears began to roll down his face. He said, my mama just had a stroke. Things are pretty bad at home. I'm so thankful I can get her something. That's God's love. And I showed him that. 
It was more than 145,000. It was eternity. It was, it was ministry. It's love. Amen. It's more than that. That's what the church does. We love people with God's love until hope is born and faith is lived. Final story I'll tell you, hopefully. <laughs> I got a call. There's a mom who struggles mentally. She has six incredible kids <laughs> from the age of like five to 12. I said, Pastor, she's being evicted today. What? The man in their life visits long enough to get the check, go back to wherever he lives. But it's somebody that's there for her, so she takes it. They're living in a 500 square foot block building, metal roof, no insulation, and no air conditioner. This is in July when it was literally over 100 degrees each and every day. She had called and asked for a box fan. Only for us to find out that's all she had was a box fan. I get the call. They're, 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 they're evicting them today. So I ease over to the neighborhood, pull up into the yard. And the sheriff's deputies are there and they're escorting her out the door. The kids are crying. The landlord's there. I get out of the vehicle. And I say, whoa, 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 guys, whoa. You're putting six kids on the street, guys, and mom. I don't have the building ready yet. <laughs> I told him what I was doing. So I said, Landlord, what can I do to keep them in here? Pay the rent. They were 10 months behind. We didn't have it. Wouldn't have been good stewards to pay for it. I said, what about from this day forward? Will you put it in my name? Preacher, if that's what you want to do, I don't care whose name it is as long as I pay the rent. I said, we'll do it and do it on auto draft. That way you don't have to worry about it no more. How about that? Yes, sir. So for $400 a month, we took it. I said, I need two air conditioners put in it. Easy now. I said, no, I need two air conditioners put in it. I need it fixed. Then we began to provide furniture through resources we did have. And we moved that family right back in that house where they've been living now for four months rent-free. We paid for the utilities. We paid for everything they got provided. And that's one of the reasons we need by your side because they need to be moved into there. It costs us almost $1,200 a month right now to take care of them. Mm. There's future families like the one you'll see on the screen. These are families that are everywhere. I know you may not see them, but they're there. But they have to keep moving because if they get caught, DHR will take the kids away from them, which they should because they're homeless. And they can't provide for their kids the way they need to. God, help us that they don't have to. So we find them everywhere under bridges, and we find them in cars. They're constantly moving hotel to hotel, place to place. A lot of them victims of COVID. A lot of them victims of situations that was beyond their control. They had no way of knowing. They just need somebody to show them the love of God and somebody to say, hey, what is your situation? Don't, me, don't let me put you with all the others. What is your situation? What can I do? And what can I do for those kids that didn't choose their mommy or daddy? They were just given the one they were given that are innocent victims in this. What can I do for their life to show them that they are worthy of loving so much that Jesus Christ gave his life for them so that I could love them today? What can I do for you? And those are the homes we're going to do. This year we had the joy of providing Christmas for almost 100 individuals. We provided a shirt, pants, and shoes for all the kids we provided a toy for all the kids. We provided things for the homeless that needed necessities, things they desperately need, like heat for their tent, <laughs> cots to sleep on. We provided every teenager in our church with a pair of hey dudes. Come on, y'all. I didn't know I was so cool. Hey dudes is old man shoes, I thought. I've been wearing hey dudes for a couple years. They asked the kids, what do y'all want? We got two requests, Nike slides, mm-hmm, and hey dudes with the black souls. It's got to be black souls. And I said, you mean they requested hey dudes? Yes, sir, Pastor. That's what they wanted. I'm like, man, look at me. <laughs> Styling, profile, wearing with pride now. I walk up into you for going, hey guys, okay, I got your pastor finally got hip. It's cool. You don't say hip or cool either one, do you? Why? It's more than needing shoes. Little Terrell, I mentioned a while ago. I, Walked in after we give them to him one night and had his little hey dudes in his arms. 
I said, T, man, them look tight, buddy. You going to put them on? No, sir. I said, why didn't you put them on? Somebody step on them. <laughs> I said, well, buddy, we gave them to you to wear, buddy. I will when I get them home. And every time he comes into church, he's high-stepping it. I said, you got them kicks on, boy? I said, yes, sir. He smiles. He said, God sure does love us, don't he? I said, he does. He really does. So I come this morning and say thank you. Not for the money, not for the support, the chairs, not for Colleen and her crazy crew, not even for Mr. Charlie, <laughs> not just for your pastor and his wife, not just for you, but I say thank you above everything else for allowing us to bring hope to a community that needed to know that there was people that loved them and didn't just put them away with the rest of the dirty society and the worthless people that may not be worthless at all according to the eyes of God, they were worth his son. So shouldn't they be worth that to me? And they are. And I'm thankful that you saw it that way. And I'm thankful that you said this is value. These people have value and I'm going to invest in them. And you have provided an incredible 2023 and it's only just begun. God bless you. Thank you for giving hope to By Your Side Family Hope Center. Sometimes all you can do is say thanks. Thanks for restoring the image of God in a group of people. Thank you for being the hands and feet of Jesus this year. Sitting down on the front row, I was like, there's a drop in a bucket, 145 grand. What can we do this year? There's always going to be a need. Jesus said, the poor you'll always have with you. Guess what that means? It means God always looks for ways for us to be generous, to help out people. I say it every week. You're the greatest church in the world. Thank you for seeing needs and meeting it. Thank you for restoring dignity in the lives of a group of people. And thank you for bringing out great gifts in yourself and bringing out great gifts in <laughs> Pastor Jeff and Sister Donna. What is God going to do in the future? I'm excited to be a part of it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for another opportunity we have today to come together and be taught your word. Lord, see what you're doing here on the Gulf Coast and all around the world. Thank you that we get a chance to partner with you because the love of Christ compels us. Lord, thank you that we're blessed to be a blessing. Thank you for what we get to do now and what we're going to do in the future. And we trust you to do it in Jesus' name. With every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're here today, maybe something that Pastor Jeff said, or maybe all throughout the service, like so many other people would say, there's been this pulling on me. Maybe you're here today and you're lacking hope. And you're here today and you're like, Chad, I'm not right with God. Why don't you start 2024 with Jesus, partnered with Jesus, knowing that you're right with God. Here's what we're going to do. I'm not going to do anything to embarrass you, and I'm not going to do anything to, you know, uh, rob you of any dignity. But if you're here today, and you're like, Pastor Chad, I don't have a relationship with God, or maybe you one time served God, but you drifted and fell away. And you're here today and saying, Pastor Chad, I'm not right with God. Here's what I want to do. I want to, I'll, I'll, I want to pray a prayer with you so that tonight, whenever you put your head on your pillow, you can know that you're right with God. That, if that's you, with nobody looking around, you say, Pastor Chad, I'm not right with God. Would you pray for me? Would you just lift up your hand real quick? PC, I'm not right with God, but I want to be right with God today. Those of us who, with our hands raised in here, those of us uh, watching online and in Bay Manette, all of us right now, we're all going to pray this prayer together, and you're going to be assured for heaven as if you were already there. Pray this prayer out loud with me, church. Dear Lord Jesus, you know I'm a sinner, and I know I'm a sinner. And I've committed sins. But today, Lord Jesus, I give you those sins. I ask you to come into my heart, wash me clean, and I'll live for you as you show me how. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen to me. If, you would, if you'd be so good, if you raised your hand today, or you prayed that prayer for the first time, here's what I want you to do. 
I want you on that Connect card. Even those of us watching online, there's an opportunity for you to fill out that Connect card. Turn it into our giving boxes on your way out, okay? Those of us watching online, all you got to do is email. It'll it'll be sent to to us uh, right then and there because we want to follow up with you. We want to show you how you can grow in your relationship with God, okay? And so that you can be able to think new, be new, and be around some folks that are going to bring out the best in you, okay? Now, we're coming to the, uh, the end of our service where we get to honor God with His tithes and your offerings. And so here's one of the things that I, I'm excited about. I always love end of the year because there are people that uh, will come like, man, God blessed us so much. I want to I make sure that I, uh, that I get a chance to honor Him this year with it. I remember a couple of years ago when I was pastoring in another state, there's a guy, he was a multimillionaire. And uh, he was telling me, he goes, you know, I give. And I was like, eh, none of my business. I don't care what you give. I mean, and he goes, I just put cash in the offering and everything like that. And I was like, I, bro, I, I don't care how you give. I mean, that's between you and God. And I was like, well, why don't you put it in, a, in an envelope? And he's like, I don't really think anything about it. I said, well, I mean, at the end of the year, you get tax credit for it. And he goes, what? He said, <laughs> then... He was kind of new to the things of God. He said, well, blank, blank. If I'd have known that, I'd been giving a lot more money. I was like, well, okay. I was like, I can't believe you're a millionaire. My God, who doesn't know this? Uh, but uh, uh, just a reminder to everybody, all of your gifts are tax deductible uh, at Coastal Church, just in case there may be somebody in here that did not know that. Uh, but thank you so much for honoring God. And today, for those of us uh, that are new to Coastal Church, you may be here and you're checking us out and like, I'm not real comfortable giving, giving my tithes uh, just yet. I want to check y'all out, make sure you're cool. That's totally fine. We created something called a dollar club, all right, and uh, where uh, uh, it's a completely separate fund that has to go out the door, all right? And so every, we challenge everybody every week, at least give a dollar to the dollar club because everybody wants their money to make a difference. Well, today's dollar club recipient is going to be Jeff and Donna Calhoun. You know, last year of that $145,000 that you sowed, you know how much money they got from that? Zero. Close your eyes. That's how much, uh, how much they say. I'm on Jeff's board. I know what Jeff makes. And you know what? The Holy Spirit's put on my heart and said, now it's time to bless Jeff and Donna. The church, we already have uh, something uh, set aside, but today I want, you, I want you to be able to have a part in blessing them as well, okay? They got, they got a wedding to pay for soon. All right, and I know what he makes in that wedding. I was like, oh my God, that's almost a year's salary. So anything uh, today that goes to the Dollar Club, we're going to bless them with it. Why? Because we're blessed to be a blessing. Would you stand with me real quick? I want to pray for you really quick, and then you can go and enjoy the last day of 2023. Father, I love you so much, and I thank you for another opportunity we've had today to come and be in your presence. Now, Holy Spirit, you're always with us. Now I ask you to guide our steps. Anoint our steps. Help us to walk in wisdom. Walk in, your, walk in your favor this week. Lord, may us see the hand of God this week leading and guiding our life so that the Gulf Coast will be saved. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. God bless you. I love you. Happy New Year.